Fallout 3 and Skyrim are two of the most popular RPGs of all time, and while they are both Bethesda made, their settings couldn't be any more different. So what would happen if the playable character from each game got into a fight? Who would win? The Lone Wanderer from Fallout 3 or the Dragonborn from Skyrim? A few things to mention before we start looking at each character. One, I know a lot more about Fallout than I do Skyrim or Elder Scrolls in general. Hopefully, I won't get anything wrong, but it could happen. Two, we'll be looking at each of the characters after the main questline of their game has been completed. The assumption is that any DLC was completed before the main questline. Three, no companions or factions will be involved, just the characters themselves. Four, lastly, in order to have some semblance of order, each character will be limited to a single set of armor and two weapons. Let's start with the Dragonborn, just because. Skyrim's playable character is the latest in a long line of individuals who have been born with the blood and soul of a dragon, but the body of a mortal. It falls on the Dragonborn to put a stop to Alduin, a legendary dragon that once ruled Skyrim, all the while being the deciding factor in Skyrim's civil war. Alongside several ancient Nord warriors, the Dragonborn is able to defeat Alduin and bring some semblance of peace to Skyrim. In other adventures, the last Dragonborn travels to Ravenrock and eventually to Apocryphia to battle Mirak, the first Dragonborn. He also becomes a vampire or a vampire hunter in the Dawnguard DLC. Moving on to skills and perks, the Dragonborn is unique in that his power theoretically has no limit. After a skill reaches level 100, it can be reset to 15 by making it legendary. This means that the Dragonborn's health, magicka, and stamina are endless. They are restricted only by time itself. The Radiant Quests in Skyrim would allow someone to keep playing the game and increasing their skills for as long as they desired. In practice, there would be some limit for how high health, magicka, and stamina could go based on what data types are used in the game's code. What this all means is that the Dragonborn can be a master in all forms of combat, armor and weapon forging, magic, manipulation, and more. As for weapons and armor, there are a lot of options. Because of the Dragonborn's smithing and enchanting skills, he can create weapons and armor that are more powerful than anything found in Skyrim. But that makes things really boring. One of the best weapons available is Windshear, a unique scimitar obtained after completing the Dark Brotherhood questline. Its unique ability is that it has a 100% chance of staggering an enemy, which takes several seconds to recover from. Basically, if the Dragonborn is within melee weapon distance, any opponent has no chance. And because close range is taken care of, we might as well give him a Nightingale Bow, one of the most powerful ranged weapons in Skyrim, as a second weapon. Another option, instead of the bow, would be to summon a Flame Thrall. It's not a companion, it's a Flame Atronach that is not restricted by time, meaning it's by your side until it dies. The obvious armor choice is Daedric Armor. It's heavy as all hell, but it's the strongest armor set in the game, and come on, look at it. If someone shows up to fight you in that, you're gonna question every decision you've ever made that's led you to that moment. And before we get to the Lone Wanderer, I know what you're saying. Why not use this magic spell, or this weapon, or this, or that? It's because this is what I went with. Next, the Lone Wanderer. By the end of Fallout 3, the Lone Wanderer is a capital wasteland legend. Despite growing up in the safety of Vault 101, he still manages to shape the capital wasteland around his ideals. His quest is far less grandiose in scale than the Dragonborn's, but is still important. After escaping Vault 101, he tracks down his father and helps bring a source of clean water to the wasteland, while getting involved in a power struggle between the Brotherhood of Steel and the Enclave. DLC sees him defeat aliens after being abducted by Mothership Zeta, participate in a simulation of the liberation of Alaska during the Sino-American War, infiltrating a slave trade operation in Pennsylvania, and uncovering the secrets of Point Lookout's State Park. Being released before Skyrim, it makes sense that Fallout 3's perks and skills are more basic. When you level up, you assign points to skills and pick perks. Even if you never touch a first aid kit, you can still be a master class surgeon. Skills are capped at 100, and the game's level cap is 30. There's also the special system, a group of 8 unique stats, 
that affect various aspects of your character, from how much they can carry to how intelligent they are and more. It is possible to get 100 in every skill through some planning and utilizing skill books. Perhaps the best perk available is Nuclear Anomaly, which causes a violent explosion to erupt from the Lone Wanderer every 10 seconds while his health is below 20. Weapons and armor are a lot simpler this time. The best weapons at his disposal are Experimental Merv and Alien Blaster. The Experimental Merv is a mini-nuke launcher that fires 8 miniature nuclear warheads each time it's fired. The Alien Blaster is a powerful handgun-type weapon that has a 100% chance of landing a critical hit, allowing it to one-shot all but the most powerful of foes. The best armor is the Hellfire Enclave Armor, a unique set of heat-resistant power armor developed by the Enclave. It's capable of withstanding more punishment than the traditional T-51B power armor, which was the best mass-produced armor humanity ever made. Now, the showdown between the Lone Wanderer and the Dragonborn. Before we go any further, please keep in mind that this video is just my opinion. This isn't the definitive answer to the question being posed in this video. You're more than welcome to disagree with me. To be perfectly honest, if you've been paying attention, the winner should be fairly obvious. The Lone Wanderer is no pushover by any stretch of the imagination. But the Dragonborn is almost otherworldly powerful. He's literally legend made flesh. He's traveled to other dimensions and defeated world ending foes. The Lone Wanderer, for all of his accolades, just can't compete with that kind of a being. Alright, that's gonna do it for this video about the Lone Wanderer versus the Dragonborn. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.